If you're someone who bombed one, two, three, or maybe even your past 10 technical interviews for a mechanical engineering role, or you have one that's coming up, well, don't worry because in this video, I'll be giving you my top tips and tricks for nailing your next technical interview. After watching this video, I guarantee you, you will be more prepared than 99% of the people out there. Rejections are a normal part of the job hunting process. I've done about 70 to 100 interviews for mechanical engineering roles at startups, medium size, and global 500 companies. And most of these interviews led to job rejections in the end, especially early on when I first started applying to full-time mechanical engineering positions during my last year of university. For a few of these rejections, I honestly was pretty surprised and thought I performed well in the interviews. But for the majority of the rejections, the technical interviews always seemed to trip me up and I truly felt I didn't deserve the job. However, despite so many failures and feeling depressed after each rejection, these rejections really exposed my weaknesses and taught me so much. All of these job rejections ultimately made me better for my next interview and were the reason why I was able to land so many job offers in the end. Obviously, the ideal situation for all of you would be to take a more direct path to success than I did and to avoid so many job rejections. And the goal of this video is to help you do that. As a fresh graduate, I didn't have the luxury of having a mentor who could spoon feed me advice on how to ace interviews. Universities sure as hell don't teach us these things. And what I noticed is there are a ton of resources on Google and YouTube on how to ace software engineering coding interviews, but virtually none for mechanical engineering interviews. So here are some things I would do differently to prepare for technical interviews if I could start over. Number one is interview preparation. This is something I completely overlooked as a senior in university. The issue was I took most of the core mechanical engineering courses during my sophomore year. So I forgot most of the material once I was a senior. So definitely brush up on the earlier classes that you took in university from time to time and give yourself ample amount of time to review the fundamental concepts before an interview. This includes statics and dynamics, mechanics and materials, material science, heat transfer, thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, engineering design, manufacturing processes, and measurements and instrumentation. Technical interview questions generally don't just ask you to memorize formulas and equations, but instead know how to apply them. For example, in heat transfer, we learn Fourier's law, which states that the rate of heat transfer through a uniform material by conduction is directly proportional to the area normal to the direction of the heat flow and the temperature gradient in the direction of the heat flow. While Newton's law of cooling says the rate of heat exchange between an object and its surroundings via convection is proportional to the difference in temperature between the object and its surroundings. So if you're interviewing for a mechanical engineering role at AMD or Intel, a question that you might get asked is use Fourier's law and Newton's law of cooling to identify weaknesses and improve the design of a CPU heatsink. One of the most challenging things about mechanical engineering interviews is you never know what the interviewer will ask you. The interviewer could be an engineer, engineering hiring manager, or a panel of engineers. Mechanical engineering is a very broad discipline and there is a lot of knowledge to acquire. This is one of the biggest roadblocks that I see many fresh mechanical engineering graduates, including my former self, struggle to overcome because the technical questions that employers ask are either very specific or have to do with technical challenges that the company is currently facing. Then there are those questions that you would only be able to answer if you did a lot of technical interviews in the past or if you worked as an engineer in industry for a year or two through an internship or co-op. Unlike coding technical interviews, where most of the questions are transparent and available online on Google, YouTube, and platforms like LeetCode and Algo Expert, mechanical engineering interviews can vary significantly from company to company and are way harder to prepare for. To help you guys out, I put together a list of 80 technical questions spanning all aspects of mechanical engineering that I think are great to know and hopefully will help you land your dream job. Keep in mind that the solutions are not included. I think it's very important that you do your own research and to think through the problems yourself, which will help you better prepare for the technical interview and 
instead of memorizing answers and regurgitating them during an interview. So for those of you who are interested, check out the link in the description below. One other very effective strategy that I failed to use early on but I implement now is analyzing the job description of whatever role I'm interviewing for. Generally, I look for keywords that reveal the types of technical questions that the interviewer could potentially ask. For example, if we take a look at the job description of this Vision Pro product design engineer position at Apple, one of the key qualifications include detailed product design experience. This means there will be a 99% chance that you will be bombarded with questions related to design for manufacturing and assembly, such as how would you design the enclosure frame for a specific manufacturing process and what materials would you use? How would you optimize the part design for mass production and how would you design Design the laminated glass such that it doesn't break when dropped onto a concrete floor. Another key qualification is a strong understanding of mechanical engineering theory. Based on a product, we can say that mechanics of materials, heat transfer, material science, and design and manufacturing are all fair game. Moving on, candidates should have a basic understanding of geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. So know your control frames and what all the symbols represent. The candidate should also be proficient at tolerance analysis. This means that during an interview, you should expect Apple to give you an assembly and ask you to complete a tolerance analysis or at a bare minimum, ask you how you would go about conducting one. You also need to possess a working knowledge of finite element analysis principles. What this means is they might ask you questions like, how would you use FEA to improve a specific design? What types of elements and boundary conditions would you use? And what is the finite element method? Some other keywords include DFM, which stands for design for manufacturing, materials, and manufacturing processes. You should expect the interviewer to give you a part design that cannot be manufactured and then ask you to identify all of the problematic features in a part as well as to provide solutions. In terms of materials related questions, this could include beam theory and stress frame curve questions as well as mechanical properties of specific engineering plastics and metals. On the job description, we also see FAI, which stands for First Article Inspection and CPK Dimensional Reports. From this, we can assume that Apple will ask us questions like, what are some ways you could improve process capability? And what is the relationship between process capability and engineering part specifications? The candidate will also need to be knowledgeable in optics, lenses, cameras, sensors, displays, PCBs, flex cables, silicon, antennas, batteries, thermals, and mechanisms. Because this is a mechanical engineering role, the interviewer wouldn't ask you to design a circuit or electrical engineering related theory, unless he or she is a dick of course, but instead, how would you mount the camera components, lenses, sensors, and how would you manage the cables and make all of the components waterproof? In terms of optics, based on the job description and title, I don't think you would need to be an expert at designing light pipes, diffusers, and lenses, but you would need to have a general knowledge of Snell's law, the law of reflection, and optical properties of different materials. Based on a job description, you should also expect one or two questions related to DOEs, which stand for design of experiments and the process for conducting root cause analysis. As you can see, just by analyzing the job description, we can get a really good sense of what the interviewer might ask. One last tip for preparing for technical interviews is read the machinery's handbook. Read it before bed instead of swiping through TikTok videos on your phone and wasting your life away. You'll thank me later. It does an exceptional job at summarizing and highlighting the important mechanical engineering concepts and is a must have for mechanical engineers. Link in the description below if you're interested. The second thing I would do differently if I could start over is I would know my own resume inside and out. If you made it past the first round of interviews with HR and on to the second round, it's very likely your resume is pretty good. But bear in mind that your resume can either be your best best friend or worst enemy. I bombed my first couple of interviews because I didn't know my own resume well enough. As I mentioned earlier, the job description is the best place for us to look for keywords that hint what questions the interviewers will ask us. Well, guess what? So is your resume. Know every bullet point and every word in every sentence because 
engineering managers love to kick off interviews by going through your resume before getting into the actual meat of the technical question. For instance, if you wrote on your resume, led the design efforts of an electronic enclosure for plastic injection molding and resolved DFM challenges with vendors, be prepared for the interviewer to fire off questions like a machine gun. Why did you use plastic injection molding for the enclosure and not some other process? What materials did you use and why? What does the stress strain curve look like for that material? What were the weaknesses of your design and how would you improve it? Why weren't you able to design the part so that it was manufacturable the first time around? What drafting and shutoff angles did you use and why? What are some common plastic injection molding defects and how would you adjust the process parameters to prevent them from happening? I think you get the point. The third thing I would do differently is responding in a more strategic way to questions I don't know. There will always be curveball questions that stump you or you just don't know how to answer. When I first started interviewing, I was so bad at this. I would simply say, I'm not really sure or this isn't really my area of expertise. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? A much better way to respond is by thinking out loud and drawing upon a similar past experience that you had and that you can share with the interviewer. If the interviewer asks you, do you have any experience designing titanium alloy sheet metal parts? Be honest, but don't flat out say, unfortunately, I don't. Instead, you can say something along the lines of, I have extensive experience working with aluminum and sheet metal parts and have a working knowledge of sheet metal design principles, such as uniform wall thickness, minimum bend radii, and distances for bends, holes, curls, notches, and tabs. I'm sure a lot of the same principles can be applied to titanium sheet metal part design and that I will be able to quickly learn any new knowledge required. You can also take this chance to demonstrate to the interviewer that even though you don't have experience designing titanium sheet metal parts, you do know a thing or two about titanium, such as it exhibits a high strength to weight ratio, excellent corrosion resistance, and low thermal expansion compared to steel and aluminum alloys. For these reasons, it's commonly used in aerospace, automotive, and healthcare applications. The fourth thing I would change is simply practice more. What I mean by this is not just practicing answering technical questions in your head, but actually recording yourself speaking with a camera. Trust me, I'm a YouTuber. The way you think you sound is a lot different than how you actually sound. Practice sounding confident and energetic even if it means faking it. Believe it or not, interviewers are all human and giving off positive vibes goes a long way. If you can, have a friend or family member ask you some technical questions. And if you're still a student, try to attend some mock interview and resume critique events at your school through the career development office if it has one. Aside from everything we talked about, just try your best to sound somewhat intelligent, confident, show your eagerness to learn new things, and most importantly, show that you can communicate your ideas clearly. You shouldn't be expected to know everything if you're fresh out of college. Most of the time, interviewers will already have a good sense of whether you're qualified or not just by your background and the way you talk. As far as the technical questions go, follow my four recommendations in this video and you'll maximize your chances of knowing your next technical interview and become one step closer to landing your dream job. Try not to overthink or take it personally if a company ghosts you or rejects you. It's all part of the game. Make the most out of past interviews by keeping track of all the questions that were asked, particularly the ones that tripped you up. All right, guys, that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe for more interview tips and tricks and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.